welcome back to Vine Reform. Uh, today we are getting into something really exciting. We are here at Fermentations with Tim Christensen, and today we are going to make a California Viognier. All right, um, we just opened the box, so what we have uh, before us um, are our stabilizers and our juice. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and ask Tim about what everything's gonna be doing uh, when we're making this wine. Well, the first ingredient we're going to add today, besides some water that's in the bottom of the fermenter, is called bentonite. Bentonite is a volcanic ash clay mm -hmm. that it's everywhere around the world. It's very expansive. The particles of bentonite are negatively charged ion particles and opposites attract. So the juice being full of positively charged ions, um, the, those particles bond to the bentonite, they stick together and the bentonite is heavy. So during the fermentation process, the bentonite grabs particles of juice and sinks to the bottom and then the bubbles from the fermentation process carry the bentonite back up to the top of the fermenter where the bubble pops and then the clay grabs more bentonite and pulls particles to the bottom so you get this stirring motion going on inside the fermenter. Cool. But it also acts as a pre-fining agent, a pre-clarifier, because the particles of bentonite pulling those solids to the bottom um, help keep get your wine to become more clear. Cool. So I'd like you to take the scissors, cut the top of the package off, and stir that warm water that's in the bucket while you uh, sprinkle the bentonite into the bucket. Now we're going to add the juice mixture. All of the kits contain juice and some amount of juice concentrate. Mm -hmm. This kit in particular has 14, excuse me, 8 liters of juice and juice concentrate. So you're going to add water to the mixture to bring it up to the 6 gallon mark. Your 6 gallon mark is this ridge on the inside right here. Okay. So we're going to add the juice and then we're going to add water after that. sugar concentration or the density of the juice mixture. We just float a hydrometer in the juice and we measure the original gravity, original sugar concentration or specific gravity. Okay. The density of water with no sugar or salt in it is measured at 1.0 right here. Okay. But because there's sugar in your juice mixture, the dissolved solids push up on the hydrometer and make it float higher. We're looking for a specific gravity somewhere between 1.080 to 1.10 today, which represents roughly 12 to 14 percent alcohol, like a typical wine. Okay. So this is a wine thief taking samples. Just slide the hydrometer in here. We're going to dip it in the juice water mixture and fill it, and then hold it like a plumb bob, like by the top. So look for the 1.0 where that's water. It's facing you. Should be close. 1.0. Haha. <laughs> okay, so that's water. Okay. Then reading down the scale, 1.01, 1 .01, 02, 1.03, 04, 05, and you're looking for where the meniscus or the low part of the curve of the liquid crosses that scale. That's 1.080. So that's what you record as your starting gravity, 1.080. Now, as the yeast consumes the sugar that's in the juice and makes alcohol, the density of alcohol is less than the density of water. Okay. So when the sugar is consumed and converted into alcohol, the density of your liquid drops, it reduces until it finishes at less than the density of water, which is one is 0.996 or less. Now it's time to add your yeast. Your yeast is called EC1118. It's a champagne style yeast, has a high tolerance for alcohol. The tolerance level or the attenuation of the yeast is mm -hmm. high because we want to make the wine dry. The granules that you see are nutrients, they're food for the yeast. Yeast is microscopic, you can't see it with your eyeballs. The yeast is what you would see on a black or a blue or a red grape, it's that bluish gray film. Now the yeast that have been freeze dried and they're dormant, they're sleeping, mm -hmm. they'll rehydrate and they'll wake up 
and they'll, they're hungry. So they start eating those granules of nutrient and initially they just give off bubbles. It's called the respiratory phase, they're just breathing. Okay. When the cells are all awake, then they begin multiplying their cell culture, bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger until they're strong enough as a culture to make alcohol. Then they'll eat sugar in your juice and make alcohol till they run out of sugar to eat and then they go back to sleep. I keep a jar of yeast. This is from a batch of white wine. You can see the white wine above it. That is yeast that grew from one of those little packets that you just added. Oh my goodness. So it gives you a feel for how much yeast is necessary in order to make uh, alcohol. So we're going to put this lid on here. I'll get you a persuader. Yeah, go ahead and, and hammer that lid down all the way around. We're going to get an air lock or a fermentation lock to with a little bit of water in it to relieve the pressure of the gas that's coming off the fermentation process. But we want to keep oxygen away from the juice, or away from the wine during the fermentation process. And so, so that's what the water would do? Yeah, so it's like a heat trap underneath your kitchen sink. The, it allows the gas, in this case, to escape out through the fermenter without letting oxygen back in and that part of it is done. I mean, I was really interested to know how you came to winemaking. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I get asked that a lot, actually. It, it started actually with a Bible study that we were part of a couples group at our church. It was called Couples First, and we were always looking for something social to do away from the church once a month. We'd have our Bible study once a month. We'd go hiking and bowling and dinner out and all these different activities, and one of the ladies in our group heard about a place where you could make your own wine. So our group started making wine at that shop back 16 years ago, and uh, it just kind of grew and grew. That guy moved to a different part of town, became a commercial brewery. So we got the equipment, we started making it at our house with our friends, and just really enjoyed the the social aspects of making our own wine with our friends and uh, had a ball with it and then uh, back in 2011 we opened our store here at, or at our original location, location to help other people learn how to make wine and beer. I think part of what makes this such a fun hobby is the, the pride that you get from doing it yourself and you do learn a lot about the process of making wine or learn about wine itself by making it and you'll end up with a 29 or 30 bottles of wine from one batch and you can taste the same wine over and over and over again and see how it improves with time how the flavors develop okay. all right well thank you so much for starting us on this wine journey and i'm really excited to uh, continue to see the viognier uh, ferment and change and um, you know this place is super awesome so I really appreciate your time